Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Cochin Shipyard Limited Q4 and FI22 conference call hosted by Kiran Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vastupal Shah. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome Sri Madhu S. Nair, Chairman and Managing Director of Coaching Shipyard Limited, Sri Jose V. J., Director of Finance, and Sri Shyam Kamal N., Company Secretary of the Coaching Shipyard Limited. Madhu ji, over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone, for joining. Uh, happy to have all of you here again. Uh, the year that's uh, just gone by has been, um, I should say, a mixed bag for uh, Coaching Shipyard Limited. We have done uh, reasonably well in certain segments. There have been some uh, disappointments. I'll just briefly touch upon what has happened in uh, various areas and various themes. Uh, shipbuilding projects, the key activities were on the indigenous aircraft carrier, which has now gone through three rounds of uh, sea trials, which is a very significant achievement. And uh, the vessel is uh, ready for uh, being ready for delivery as early as uh, July of uh, 2022, and for a potential commissioning into the Indian Navy by August 2022. So significant efforts were put on the IAC, and uh, from a uh, fiscal point of view and financial point of view, the IAC uh, attained the targets which we had set for ourselves uh, for the year. We also effected uh, deliveries of uh, various vessels. So most of the projects that was in uh, various phases of construction in the company has been delivered now. So we are delivered uh, from the floating border outposts, which we are doing nine numbers. Six have been delivered. Three are in uh, advanced stages and uh, ready, getting ready for delivery next month. 500 packs vessel had been delivered. The second vessel uh, is completed all trials and is actually just, just waiting for formalities from the client side uh, to be handed over. So that also could happen, uh, in fact, as early as this month uh, end. Uh, the, we are building a series of boats uh, for the Cochin Water Metro. The total order value is about 175 crores. We face disappointment over there. Uh, we had delivered one vessel, four are in advanced stages in the company, and 16 in various stages uh, in, the, in, the, in the company. But we have not been able to deliver it. Small technical hitches. But uh, as we speak, uh, we should be in a position to deliver another four of those uh, coming months, and uh, those pro uh, vessels are getting delivered. So all in all, there's been deliveries uh, during the last year. And uh, the progress work that is happening right now is, I'll, I'll probably touch upon it uh, as we move forward. Ship repair projects generally has been a steady year. Mumbai operations uh, could do better, even though even though we have not been able to attain uh, levels what we what we wanted. So Mumbai uh, has done about uh, 85 crores approximately turnover uh, uh, 21 22 uh, kolkata operations has uh, given uh, has done better than expected uh, we we actually were just expecting to just get started over there but we have been able to do uh, kolkata could uh, give a turnover of around 33 34 crore rupees and uh, we have just started the operations in uh, andamans because uh, covid got a little bit prolonged in Andamans. Uh, there were still travel restrictions into Andamans. So Andamans, we just got started. Otherwise, in the Kochi main unit, uh, we had naval projects. We had other projects also. Generally, things went well. Uh, on the shipbuilding side, looking into the future, we have been able to uh, secure some uh, new orders 
and which has been very very gratifying for us we have secured uh, a new order for a large uh, dredger for dredging operation of india and this is a very significant uh, win for us because the uh, order value is uh, about 900 crores approximately and uh, in all probability this could go up to three vessels uh, what we are signed now is one vessel but it could go up to three vessels and uh, it's it's also a uh, cooperation with um, international leader ihc of netherlands and uh, this is under the make in india initiative so this is a large uh, uh, project that's coming we have also been successful in uh, concluding contracts for eight numbers multi purpose vessels with a german client and this again is a very significant uh, achievement because this is coming from the uh, what is called the short sea vessel market in europe and uh, these uh, the area from where we have got this german order is uh, actually the the home of short sea shipping in west europe and the, 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 so it's not very easy to break into that group but uh, we have been welcomed into that group and this first set of orders have been signed uh the next generation missile vessel which we have been talking uh, you are you all aware where we are l1 <laughs> the complete negotiations everything is concluded and it is actually going through the final round of approvals in the navy we have been promised prior to june of this year but we are also getting conflicting signals uh, there are no issues but then the process is taking a bit longer than uh, what we probably thought so so there could be a few more months but uh, we have still been promised uh, before june there there's nothing to be discussed further uh, contracts and pricing everything is done with the committees uh, so the the more, why i said it's been generally gratifying is like uh, you are aware that we have embarked on what we are calling the cruise 2030 uh, strategic initiative uh, which we uh, prepared along with the boston consulting group so segments in the cruise 2030 uh, which was uh, dredgers short sea vessels into europe we have been able to break into that uh, tugs is one significant area that has been mentioned and we have been to a subsidiary uh, in udupi uh, the earthwell tegma shipyard limited which we have now renamed as udupi kochin shipyard limited <coughs> has uh, we have been uh, able to do the first two tug contracts so we are done this with the company called ocean park limited which has uh, you would have seen in the press which has recently been 100% acquired by the adani group so it's again good to get started with uh, two tugs which is now potentially going to the adani group so all in all the order intake side uh, we feel uh, we have been comfortable uh, we have also been strongly talking in uh, europe and i'll talk about that a little bit later uh, as we move forward Uh, on the on the new infrastructure and the capex investments uh, again it's been disappointing both uh, on the new dry dock project which is being executed by lnt on a turnkey basis the progress has not been uh, as expected there has been there's been technical challenges and uh, the revised uh, dates that has been uh, uh, talked now is uh, july 2023 for completion of the civil infrastructure and there after the large crane is to be installed the crane is uh, practically ready in korea so um, uh, it's it's waiting to be uh, shipped out because uh, we are not in a position to receive it right now the civil construction is not yet complete but once the crane comes in uh, we expect after inspection and commissioning uh, q1 early part of q2 2024 we should be able to get the dry dock up and running the next large in, uh, capex infrastructure has been the international ship repair facility the isr of the ship repair uh, facility which we are creating which is uh, uh, what percentage is completed do 78 78 78 percentage completed uh, but then uh, the turnkey infrastructure company that was executing the project uh, that was simplex infrastructure limited uh, we have uh, 
had difficulties and we have actually terminated the contract in uh, February after after uh, we never wanted to do it but uh, we thought there was no other uh, option and uh, there has been continuous uh, failures and uh, we have actually terminated those contracts. So now we will have to uh, split the balance work into various uh, contracts and then execute it ourselves and that is uh, happening and then uh, we are so that's, that's setting back the CapEx projects uh, by some time, and now the expected uh, completion would be uh, late 2023. Hooghly Cochin Square Limited, which is being uh, executed through the subsidiary in Kolkata, that is complete, the infrastructure is complete. So we again uh, delays in a particular uh, crane not being able to be installed by the OEM. Uh, it, it got delayed by almost six months, that crane installation, but, but for that crane, everything was completed. So the crane has also now been uh, installed and the facility is ready. Uh, we are sensing uh, the potential uh, further orders to flow in from uh, Europe. There is a new uh, activity happening in Europe, West Europe, especially in Norway. Green ships and advanced technology vessels, and uh, we are talking uh, many projects simultaneously, and uh, we are being received well. And uh, you, are, you are aware that Cochin uh, Square is currently building a set of two vessels, uh, which are autonomous uh, zero emission vessels for Norwegian clients, which we will be delivering 15th of June. So those projects are uh, giving us good uh, visibility in Europe. So that we expect to continue. So this year, 22-23, uh, we expect to garner more new building orders from uh, Europe for high-end uh, advanced vessels. The overall uh, market uh, in the industry we feel is exciting. International market, I'm talking. The international market looks exciting. This uh, West European short sea market looks promising. The Norwegian, um, Scandinavian uh, Green vessel market looks promising, and we expect to get something more over there. Uh, tugs, which uh, India has taken the view that tugs to be operated in India should be built in India. As I said, two vessels already contracted, but uh, we expect further tugs to be done. But tugs, we want to do it from the subsidiary in uh, Udupi. Overall, the uh, both the subsidiaries, the subsidiary in Udupi, which has now been rebranded as uh, Udupi Cochin Square Limited is executing projects. They are actually participating in the Cochin Water Metro projects. Uh, eight of the vessels being built by Cochin Square Limited is actually being built at UCSL. Uh, they are doing uh, 20 small fishing vessels and they now got these new uh, tug orders. We are trying from Europe to get some orders into UCSL. HCSL is still waiting for its first order uh, from the commercial side, but the uh, as a, in a, in a inter-corporate uh, uh, within, within, the, within the group, what we have done is like uh, there has been a large, uh, there's a 20 crore order which uh, is to be executed for uh, Kolkata Port Trust. That has been uh, handed over to HCSL to get the systems up and running. Just to talk about uh, system improvements uh, in the company, the company uh, is uh, has been operating over the last 10 years on uh, a large uh, SAP uh, platform, and this SAP platform, we are now migrated to the uh, newer S4 HANA platform. So this migration, which has been a significant system improvement migration in the company has happened. The Dassault 3D experience uh, platform, which we are now implementing in our design and engineering, is uh, almost ready to be rolled out. Uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a tough uh, activity on that because this is the first time that such a large platform which is being used uh, by the industry at large is being tried out in shipbuilding in the country. And uh, we, we hope the effects of these large scale transformations on the digital plane will uh, unfold as we move forward and it will, it will give us the positive uh, effects as we move forward. So this is uh, overall on uh, what is happening uh, in the company. As I said at the start, uh, a little bit of a mixed bag uh, looking at the uh, year that's just gone by. The coming year, 
the, the present year, 22-23, I should actually uh, react a little bit uh, cautiously. It's going to be more or less flat uh, because of the way the present orders are structured. The indigenous aircraft carrier turnovers would taper down a little bit. The new large projects which we are having is a uh, ASW Corvette, which is a 6,000 crore uh, contract, out of which we have booked only 300 crores till now. But the balance, 22-23, it is more in the hull part, it's in more in the steel part. And the steel part, the turnovers will not be much. The larger turnovers will actually come in from the year 23-20 onwards. So this year, we will face some uh, headwinds on the shipbuilding side. Ship repair should go steady and should go, should improve a fair bit from where we are right now. Uh, but overall, from a turnover point of view, I think we should be largely flat as we go into 22-23. But 23-24 and 24-25, because the uh, ASW Corvette project will, will peak also, the next generation missile vessel projects will pick the eight uh, vessels which we are doing for the Germans. That turnover significantly will come uh, next financial year, that's 23-24. The dredger contract which we have signed now, right now it's in the engineering phase. And uh, coming uh, March, April onwards, we start construction on that. So that turnover will also come in 23-24. So 22, 23, just wanted to be cautious uh, on this uh, because more or less uh, flat. Margin should remain uh, generally intact. But as we move forward into next year and uh, 23, 24 and 24, 25, we see 23, 24 should see a fairly significant jump from where we are. So this is just to give a feel of where we are currently and where we could be headed. Uh, with this, I think, uh, I can stop and uh, would actually be happy to answer uh, questions. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please note, this call will run till 11 a.m. We will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press the star one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your question. Participants are also requested to kindly restrict your questions to three questions at a time. And if there are follow-up questions, to kindly come back in the queue. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Mohit Kumar from DM Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, sir, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is on the next generation missile vehicle. Yeah. And uh, what's the timeline of insurance? Is it six years? It's more than that. It's about eight and a half years. Yeah. And it's expected to be, you know, to be confirmed or that? Bob, can you repeat that question again? When we expect this order to be converted into form order, I can see. It. You see, we we are we are actually expecting this by end of June, but uh, maybe maybe I think uh, just for to be conservative, I think we should give it a few more months. Maybe maybe another so something between June and September that is what would be better to uh, say. Okay. So what kind of revenue uh, you expect from ASW Corvette in, in FY23 and FY24 and 25? I'm just trying to figure out how the ramp up will happen. Just a minute. So the ASW Corvette in FY23, uh, we should be, we should be uh, somewhere between 1,000 to 1,200 crores. And FY24, uh, we should be between 1,200 to 1,400 crores. So, largely flatish, is that right? Pardon? Largely flatish, 
so would be about see this, this year this year uh, 22 23 from the lw corvette we are expecting only about 600 levels okay understood so from 600 we'll go to about a 1000 1200 and then then we'll go to a 1200 to 1400 levels and how do you see the ship repair panning out in FY23? Yeah, just, just a minute. Just a minute. Did I did I get it wrong, Joe? Yes. Uh, yeah. So that is FY23. So so let me let me let me just uh, correct. I I got I got it wrong. So FY23 FY23 from the SW Corvette we are targeting around 600 crores. FY 24, we are targeting about 1,000 to 1,200 crores. And FY25, we are targeting about 1,200 to 1,400 crores. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Uh, so my last question is, uh, how do you see the order inflow for the rest of the year? You know, are you expecting some big, big order to get finalized in this fiscal? Uh, so this fiscal, uh, we are we are in advanced discussions in uh, Europe on the on some vessels. We we expect to to uh, conclude uh, orders. I I can't say whether it would be extremely large, but then there are mu multiple projects which we are looking at. So at, le at least a, at least a hundred million dollar kind of order should come in uh, current fiscal. And what about the Navy side, sir? Anything else to, to be checked? Uh, no, 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 nothing, nothing from the Navy, this is good. Understood. So thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Can we have the next question? Uh, Mr. Komohit Kumar, is that the end of your questions? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Sandeep Tulsiyan from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, a very good morning. Uh, good morning. The first question is uh, pertaining to uh, the execution profile of the orders, which will change materially uh, because uh, uh, you know the variable price portion of uh, the IAC was in final stages, and that will get trimmed down in FY23, uh, while ASW forward execution will pick up. Uh, so in this regards, uh, how do you see the margins? Because uh, what we recall is ASW Corvette order was booked and there was a big gap between uh, the L1 and the final award date, between which we had seen significant movement in uh, raw metal prices as well as currency. Uh, so how do you uh, expect the shipbuilding margins to pan out uh, over the next two years if you can guide us? So the shipbuilding margins uh, at an, at an bit level, uh, we would be purely from the shipbuilding side. Uh, we currently, currently because of the IAC, we have a significantly higher EBIT levels coming in. But over the over the next two years, like uh, ASW, and there is a, there's still a little bit of uh, IAC to come in. So we could be somewhere around uh, 16 percentage kind of uh, margins at the EBIT levels coming from uh, shipbuilding. In FY23? Yeah. Okay. And so going FY forward, how should we plan? FY23, we could be blended, including with, the, with what is there in the IAC, we could be just... Around, yeah. around so we can say... Slightly more. Slightly more. Slightly more. FY23, the current year, we, we still have a bit of uh, IAC coming in. Okay. So the EBIT levels would be about you, you can you can give it about uh, eighteen percentage approximately. Okay. Understood. Uh, yeah. Secondly, uh, you mentioned on the uh, revenue guidance that you might be flat on a full year basis uh, for yeah. FY23, which is close to thirty two hundred. So, how would you guide this for uh, each of these segments uh, between shipbuilding and ship repair? Uh, yeah. What can be the contribution? Uh, ship repair, ship repair would be about 900 crores. Okay. Out of out of uh, when we are flat ship repair, ship repair uh, current year we have done about 678. So that should go to about 900 crores. Uh, but the ship building, the balance is ship building, out of which uh, 
the iac could be about uh, 1400 levels okay and uh, just some bookkeeping numbers uh, from the order book uh, breakup that you have provided in the presentation uh, iac uh, still shows at 2700 crores uh, so one if you could tell us how much of revenue was booked in iac in sy22 last year uh, the breakup between fixed price and uh, the cost plus uh, portion and what is pending this breakup in the order book between fixed price and cost plus if you can guide please yes joseph can you do that yeah yeah sandeep sandeep are joseph here yes sir yeah for a 522 fully year we are booked from fixed price around 563 crores mm -hmm. and the remaining is one one two three zero from cost plus 1230 crores from cost plus and six by five sixty three, so that the total is one seven nine three from IAC for F I twenty two. Okay. And the order book portion for each? Uh, the remaining from six uh, price is rema uh, the remaining is around thousand crores. Okay. And the thousand uh, uh, seven hundred from cost loss. So totally two thousand seven hundred remaining to be booked. Perfect. And last uh, question uh, from my side uh, is on these uh, future large orders, uh, like other than next generation missile vessels, uh, if you can guide us, uh, maybe not in FY23, you said nothing from, but if one were to take a two to four year or five year view, uh, which are the big contracts, uh, which have a high probability, uh, which are high probability wins for coaching shipyard, and any status on IEC2 is completely scrapped or any plans to revive that. Uh, if you can give your thoughts on overall basis, sir, please. Okay, overall, as I said, this dredger, because the dredger, uh, we, we are going to be about three vessels for sure. So you, you give it approximately 1,000 crore each. So we are now signed one vessel. Uh, the second and third should come in uh, when I'm when giving it two to three year profile, those orders should be coming in. That's for sure. So, so let's say another another about it. One thousand eight hundred, two thousand crore kind of an order should come from that. Uh, as I said, Europe, this green shipping uh, area, like uh, there are there are projects which are at advanced stages of discussion. It will it, it's uh, hanging around a little bit because many of these projects are also supported by the Norwegian government. So uh, we, we expect, as I said, uh, we should be, uh, don't hold me onto this, but then uh, somewhere around 100 million uh, euro kind of an order should actually come in over the next, I, I give it this fiscal, early part of next fiscal kind of a thing. Okay. Uh, from, the, from the Navy, as uh, you are probably aware, there, is, uh, there are no big things that's happening right now. But as we move forward, uh, the LPD, the landing platform dock, uh, mm -hmm. that is again coming back. Those uh, uh, discussions are happening. So the LPD, four vessel LPD should be coming in. That is something which we would look at in the pipeline. The second IAC, uh, while no firm official discussions are happening, at least there's better, better energy there. And uh, there are, there are at least, uh, discussions that's taking place. So that is positive. That is. That's what I would like to convey right now. Understood. Understood, sir. Probably just comment is that overall pipeline looks a little bit uh, weaker than uh, how it has been in the past. Of course, this 10,000 crore vessel. That is, uh, that, is, uh, see, see, that, that, that is because, uh, that's because see, the Navy, Navy goes through a one large cycle. See, if you are looking at Kachin Spear, see, between the SW Corbett, which is a 6,000 crore order, and the NGM, which is 10,000, these are significant orders, you know, so 15,000 crore, uh, there are two orders that come in for Cochin Spear. Similar orders have gone in uh, elsewhere also. So, even when you look at it uh, in US dollar terms, these are large value contracts that happen. So, we feel generally comfortable because there's no point just blocking orders. Even these two orders, uh, as I said right at the start, uh, the NGMB is a BR, last vessel is around eight, eight and a half years. So mm -hmm. the, the, I, I think that, that, that's generally good to have the backbone. With this backbone, we should actually be getting in the orders of 
say around 100 million kind of a thing every year if we can garner then i think we are good hmm hmm no the comment was because a top line if you look at it in last 4 years has been close to that 3000 crore number correct correct and, uh, yeah so to grow that i mean of course of infrastructure also I, 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 i do i do agree i do agree uh, because the growth should prepare we have to uh, grow faster ship building because uh, there is, there is, there, is a, there is a particular ramp up that will happen in ship, uh, ship building but uh, when the when the aw and the ngmb comes in we expect that top line also to go when the aw and ngmb happen together we we expect that to go all right so thank you for taking the questions i won't take any more time of other participants i'll get back in the queue thank you thank you thank you we have the next question of from the line of peter agnan from sima wealth management please go ahead hello good evening sir uh, good morning sir uh, sir my first question is that uh, if you can uh, give some uh, color on the uh, raw material basket uh, so what was the raw material basket cost the, the last 2 3 years and how do you foresee the raw material pressure going forward uh see uh, if you if you are alluding to the commodities like the steel the steel pricing has definitely gone up uh and uh, the newer projects which were taken for example the german project which were taken or the dredger we have taken we have factored current uh, steel pricing uh it 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 has cooled a little bit over the last uh, let's say two months or so but uh, steel pricing is actually high it's uh, something that was around uh, 700 uh, 750 dollars a ton had gone up to around uh, 1100 1200 or even even slightly more than that per ton but uh, the good part for us is uh, many of these projects uh, we are doing the, especially the naval projects are low on steel so the overall impact uh, is not is not extremely high but yes steel price uh, increases are a point of concern for the entire shipbuilding industry and we feel this cooling down which is happening now we were expecting this cooling down and we feel it will cool down a little bit more the other uh, major cost increases that has actually happened would be copper has gone up so electrical cables and these electrical things uh, pricing have gone up a little bit uh, because of the petrochem increases paint cost have actually gone up a little bit so these were the larger things but uh, i i i think from our perspective generally manageable that's how all i would like to say uh, so in term uh, in in line with the same question sir uh, so can we uh, do, do you have a good uh, of course it depends on the contract so for most of the contracts do you have a pass through or uh, no we, we we don't have a pass through except on the iac contract we don't have a pass through we are all all uh, commercial contracts are fixed price contracts even the naval contracts are uh, fixed price contracts so you don't have a pass through so that so that is why i said it is actually a point of concern but when you are signing a new contract uh, for example on the aw corvette it's a, it's a contract which has been signed in the past so uh, any increases we will have to bear the increases but what i'm saying is the aw carbon the entire city uh, vessel is just 300 tons of uh, 250 tons of steel and 50 tons of aluminum so out of 300 tons even if you see some increases which definitely we don't want that increases but then i think it's manageable over over the full project cost i think uh, in terms of the uh, revenue guidance if you can find a little bit you had mentioned fy23 will be fast but for fy24 uh, and 25 what kind of growth can we expect broadly up to fy24 uh, we should we should see uh, anywhere between uh, 16 to 20 percentage growth and 25 to uh, 25 from the, from that position maybe maybe another 12 percentage thank you and so uh, in terms of uh, the export mix what is the percentage last two three years we are seeing uh, i don't i don't have that figure right away but the export has been practically nil 
practically in the last two three years and personally ask for yeah we we just have the uh, project for the novigen there just one project for the novigen but now we are fetching more it's the coaching uh, spread if you look at in the past about 5 6 years back there was a fair bit of uh, export percentage that was that had almost gone to zero and with the asco project uh, uh, 9 percentage it's around 9 percentage and uh, now we'll come back a little bit more okay so my final questions uh, regarding exports only uh, just to understand because of the new geopolitical tension uh, are we facing more order with part 1 and part 2 is that uh the export market for example europe which you are showing some light on to get more orders uh, are they also following some kind of an atmanirbhar uh, strategy and because of which they may not get orders so can you throw some light on those? um actually what you, what you said the geopolitical uh, part not not the not the ukraine effect I, i don't think we have seen any effect of the ukraine other than uh, overall price tightening and some decisions being put off to the right a little bit but uh, we are definitely sensing a liking for a company like coaching spread in india let me put it very clearly i'm not i'm not saying anything i'm saying coaching spread we have been actively involved uh, in the european market almost now 18 to 20 years we are definitely seeing a liking uh, there's there's huge warmth in the discussions and and there are multiple projects which we are uh, being involved i'm not saying all the projects will come towards us but we are we are actually being involved on multiple projects discussion so uh, compared to like say the option of taking some of these uh, new advanced technology new technology vessels to china uh, people are looking definitely at uh, a place like india that is for sure uh, in fact uh, if you have seen like even when uh, our uh, friends in chaugle uh, in uh, goa has uh, secured orders out of europe so this is one uh, uh, one thing and uh, the second part you said is like uh, would the europeans have some sort of a atmanirbhar kind of a thing they they don't have it right now they are actually like uh, all they want is for example the german owners uh, all they want is uh, they want some of these equipment to be uh, european make that is not because of atmanirbhar that because of serviceability reasons because these uh, equip- these vessels are a uh, short sea shipping market and uh, it's, it's a finely tuned market where uh, you can't uh, take um, uh, down time so some of the critical equipment they want uh, european brands which we are also otherwise we didn't have an issue on that we have been um, uh, working on many of those equipment that is not an issue okay uh, that is also my side. thank you so much for your time sir thank you thank you we have the next question from the line of vijay goel from icici securities please go ahead yeah hi sir good morning uh, so just wanted to understand one thing uh, what kind of blended ebitda margin uh, you know we can expect uh, for next year as you know we are expecting revenue share from shift it where is uh, going to increase to 28% uh, this year from 20% i think we had in fy22 so what kind of margin differential is there between these two segments um i think a ship repair uh, we are we are getting a a bit level of something like uh, it, it depends a little bit but uh, 21 to 23 percentage kind of a thing and and a blended uh, a bit level uh, you you're talking about the current fy23 isn't it right so fy23 18 to 19 18 19% dash okay on a bit level yes at the bit level at the bit level okay and sir one more thing uh, you mentioned that you know in fy23 uh, i mean uh, the revenues from ship repair uh, is expected at 900 crores yeah uh, but as on date i think we have order book of about 500 crores uh, only in ship repair so are yeah. we expecting uh, you know i mean more orders in ship repair and will be executed in the same year see ship repair uh, the order we have said if you note as uh, we have said approximate because ship repair order book uh, is a little bit dicey always we are giving this 
for a fair bit of guidance only. So she prepared the order book. So we would be participating in something. We we are actually uh, fairly close to securing a fairly big order, which we expect to be executed in our operations with Mumbai on she prepared. So uh, the confidence is coming from that. Uh, and uh, it may not have been concluded. And uh, in, the, in the presentation, we, we wouldn't give things that's not concluded. But then the target is coming from the optimism and uh, optimism means it's it's practically done but then uh, not yet signed that kind of a thing okay yeah but okay, it, sir, thank uh, you. It, it, yeah the, the bomb we would we would expect to do and there's a there's a large naval project which is coming in which we expect to do in our bombay operation okay sir. thank you Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Nikhil from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, uh, good morning. Uh, I know I'm audible. Yeah. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, two things. One is uh, at the AGM, you had mentioned uh, when we had raised the question that would we be looking at uh, men, uh, ship building of, say, the large vessels like the Panamax or Tuzmax, and you said, uh, the focus would only be on the niche segment. Now, uh, just to understand these niche segments, and you even in the call you mentioned that uh, the order which we've got from the German operations or the dredging. What I want to understand is how large are these segments can be, and how how is the competition in these segments, and the way we see the profitability in large. Uh, Nikhil, uh, Nikhil, you are coming a little bit broken. I, I heard what you said on the uh, what is niche and what is the uh, uh, expectations on that. But what was the last part you said? Can you repeat that again? Yeah, so my, uh, you are again broken. You are very much broken. Yes. Nikhil, if you could kindly go off the speakerphone and come on the headset, it will be much easier for us. I am ready. on headset on this. Uh, uh, now you are better. Uh, hello. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so I was trying to understand that how large is this niche segment. Yeah, okay. Okay. See, this, uh, let me talk about two spaces we have. One is the European short sea market. See, the European short sea market uh, is a set of uh, mid sized vessels. These are vessels which would be about uh, 7,000. 8,000 tons dead weight. So each of these vessels would be size-wise about 120 meter long. Now these are vessels which operate in the rivers and the coastal areas in Europe. So they, they travel across the Rhine river water system, they do trading into the Baltic, they do trading into the Caspian, and also across uh, West Europe uh, on, on the, on the sea coast. Now this market it's fairly big. There are about 2,500 ships out there in, the, in this market. And this fleet is very old. The fleet is about 18, 19 year old. So this fleet will need replacement. And when they are trying for replacement, they've been waiting. Last four, five years, they've been waiting because of all this transition that is happening in the energy market. So now this ordering is starting. And these, these guys would order, there would always be numbers here. That is why, see, we are now talking eight vessels. Uh, there, are, there are many, many shipping uh, companies like this. And these are all the funds are raised, like our mutual funds. They do this like a, a KG companies, and then they raise funds in closed groups. Uh, part will be funded, so almost 50 percentage will come as equity from HNI. So there is a particular ambience under which this whole uh, market happens. And the vessels, there will always be numbers. And it, it is a, it's, a, it's a continual flow. So if you can pick up orders, you can actually pick up large numbers. In fact, uh, Chowgla is in India. I mentioned there's been one company which was uh, active in the slightly more smaller niche vessel segment in the past. Chowgla has been a decent company in the past also. They have executed more than 20, 25 vessels into Europe in the past. We are now getting into a slightly more larger space. We are doing about 120, 130 meter kind of vessels. So we feel if we can deliver these vessels good, because these are not, uh, these are just uh, 
clearly European grade uh, vessel of a of a reasonably high quality. It is not it's not flashy. It doesn't have anything great on it, but it's st steady, straightforward things. But delivered is in good time and at a competitive price. I think there is a fairly large market available there. Similarly, on the Scandinavian side, these are advanced uh, vessels uh, getting ready for new energy. It could be ready for methanol. It could be ready for hydrogen. So then, then the competition is not big, and they they are uh, comfortable only with companies like Kosinspeard or similar in East Europe or some companies, uh, of course, in China, uh, which is good on engineering and which are ready to do a little bit high-end engineering. So, so we feel uh, connected on both these spaces. And any competition from the Greek shipyards because they've been doing uh, these ships for a long no, period of time. Competition is not Greek. Competition, uh, one, one large area of competition is Turkey. Turkey has come up very, very strongly in the past and since uh, they've got a European flavor also. The other uh, areas are East Europe, Romanian yards, Poland. Uh, so, but uh, from a pricing point of view, we may be able to outsmart the East European. Turkey is always tough, but uh, and then of course there are these mid-size uh, Chinese yards. Secondly, sir, uh, what we are looking at when we are talking to most defence companies, and there is a big push on export and uh, to the friendly nations like Philippines, Malaysia, and these are all uh, coastal countries uh, with bounded by the seas and all, and who have their own uh, shipping requirements and for their own navy. So is Poaching Shipyard doing anything on those sorts or do we have anything or any of the products which we have already delivered to be uh, exported to these markets or anything which we are looking at uh, probably we can uh, grow up in a significant way? Um, we are, we are uh, aware and we are looking at these spaces, but then uh, we haven't seen anything large in these areas because when you're talking about Philippines, Philippines has also got a shipbuilding ecosystem which can actually deliver these things. So unless there is a governmental involvement or something else, uh, we are not very sure whether these markets will open up. Uh, but yes, the Coast Guard vessel, the, the offshore patrol vessel market is all available, but uh, whether, whether it will mature immediately, I'm not too sure. So we are just we are just uh, watching this space. We haven't done anything specific over there, uh, but we are we are ready. Like we are participating in the narrative, but uh, we haven't seen anything specific happening. Sure, thank you a lot. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Kaushik Podar from KB Capital Market. Please go ahead. I just missed it. What is the turnover uh, progression you are looking at? I mean, this year will be flat, you said, is it? Correct. And what about FY24 and 25? I, I, I said we, we could grow at 16 to 20 percentage. And 25? No, no. Uh, FY24, FY25, a 12 percentage. FY25, 12 percent. Okay. Yes. And in your uh, segmental uh, uh, reporting, you have given unallocated, uh, the, the segment unallocated, there the profit has, uh, PBIT, has gone up from 4.55 crore to 142.96 crores. Can you please explain that? Yes. What is the nice video I'm talking about? You're saying in the unallocated segment, PBIT has gone up from... Four, 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 four and a half crore to nearly 143 crore the segmental accounting on, in the unallocated segment? Uh, that is mainly because we had some uh, uh, other income which is one of nature. Okay. okay. This is because of that, because as uh, CMD mentioned, we had a uh, contract termination for the uh, that, uh, CapEx EPC contractor. Okay, okay. So there was some uh, 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 bank guarantee and cash spent towards that. And similarly, there was an arbitration case, which was, uh, award was award came in favor of us, so that income was also there. So large chunk of, you can see that other income has gone up. 
uh, this this year quite a lot because of that. Okay, and in the ship repair thing, of course, you have said that your turnover will go from say six seventy eight crore this year to nine hundred crore. That's fine, but I don't see too many repairs of private ships. I mean, is it something uh, you are not looking at? Uh, no, uh, see, private private ships we do definitely look at. Uh, see, the whole thing is uh, it's a mix and match of what is the best and what is more profitable. As a general rule, uh, private ship owners, uh, especially in India, see, uh, a foreign ship owner is not just coming for repair. Nobody does it that way uh, uh, unless he is active in this area. So generally, it's the Indian ship owners who actually bring in uh, vessels. We do handle a lot of private ship repairs also, but the money is elsewhere. And the money is uh, because uh, if it's a Navy or a Coast Guard or a shipping operation of India or a dredging operation of India, they all have a particular method of planned uh, repairs, and they spend money in that particular thing. What a private ship owner does is he comes into a yard like Cochin's yard only to do what he can't do elsewhere. He will actually get it done uh, uh, in our docks. So underwater work is what they will do with us. And then they take it, uh, and then uh, ports they use these local workshops, and they the superintendents will handle it themselves, uh, and and they do it at the lowest ever price. So that is that is a model for most private ship owners. So they restrict uh, our part to the to the say underwater or the critical works, but if it's if it's a navy or a coast guard, they do the full package, and we are more keen to do it that way. But as we move forward and we build up our new ISR of and the new dry dock, we will go for uh, larger level private uh, from from the from the export market, from the international market. They handle things a little bit differently. Indian ship owners, uh, the private ship owners, generally mostly most people are with second hand vessels. They don't want to spend too much on those vessels. And uh, lastly, this dry dock facility you are putting up, will that handle? I mean, will that make different kind of uh, uh, vessels, or is the more? I mean, different, say, higher dead weight sort of yeah, thing, it's or, or it's a it's a, No, it's a much it's a much larger one. It's a it's a much larger one. Okay, okay. Yeah. And do you see your? Um, you see, you said that this year the margin is nineteen percent. Next year also you see that is FY twenty four. Also you see the margin at that level, or will it come down? See a bit, a bit. Uh, uh, we we are we are not exactly uh, planning this out, but then eighteen, nineteen percentage a bit levels. I think we should be able to hold. That's a steady state you are thinking of. Correct, 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 correct. Okay, and irrespective of this uh, raw material price rise and all those things, how do you plan yeah. to tackle this no, raw volatility in the raw material like, prices? See, raw material price. Um, uh, if you, if you are uh, getting in commercial orders of larger ships, we will have to block the raw material uh, because then then the steel costs are a very major factor over there. Today, right. uh, the vessels we are handling are the mid-size segment, and let's say the German vessels. These have got steel. But then uh, it's it's all happening within a very short time, and we already factored it in, and we have actually there is a little bit of a uh, pass through kind of a uh, clause which we are building up with them, uh, up or down five percentage on either side. Nobody talks, but beyond that, uh, people chip in that kind of uh, things which we are trying to do. But on large uh, contracts, we'll have to be more cautious. That is where we are. Okay, so this 18-19 percent uh, guidance you are giving, so that should take care of this volatility for the for FY 24-25. Beyond that, probably it, it, you have it, it to. Should, it should. It should. See, we are we are today we are we are today like uh, pitching orders which will all be delivered, uh, other than the two large naval orders. Uh, anything we are looking at is uh, is actually around 24. It won't it won't go beyond that. And uh, later part of this year, we'll start picking up orders for uh, execution in 24 and beyond. And by that time, we would have factored in this uh, volatility. So we would have factored in the higher steel cost. And, and the markets will also be ready because the market, if it's a German client or a Norwegian client, he's also looking at pricing which he is getting from elsewhere. And they would have also factored in this cost. Okay. And lastly, it's a much long, uh, it's a question of the longer time frame. Last year, I think you have been given an extension for five years. 
how do you see your company that is Cochin Shipyard at the end of your term? Where do you see it? What's the de- where, where, what is the destination you are aiming for? See, the destination we are aiming for uh, is, uh, is uh, spelled out in our cruise 2030. Uh, we have a, let's say, 2030 target. And 2030, uh, roughly, internally, we, we have uh, coined about a $2 billion company. Now, even if we fall short, I would be happy if we cross 10,000 crores by 2030. Okay. So that's okay. top. So, so I will I will leave here uh, early 2026. So by which time uh, I should I should admit that uh, COVID and its impact over the last uh, a year and a half uh, it has impacted us badly. But then uh, with the, the large orders which we have, the 15,000 crore naval orders, certain things which you are seeing in Europe, ship repair going well. We should we should do fairly well. We should uh, by the time I leave, I think uh, we should be six thousand. Hello. Hello. Your operator is the management connected with us? Uh, I am connected, right? Yes. Uh, give me a moment. Let us check. Yeah. 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 All right. It appears that the management has dropped. Give us a moment. Okay. 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 I, I remain connected. Fine. I am. I am on hold. Sure. Gentlemen, we have the management reconnected, so you may go ahead. Yep, yep. we are uh, just talking to Mr. Kaushik. And, uh, yes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm online, yes. Yeah, okay. So, so uh, that is a, that's a long-term uh, direction. And, and uh, let us be clear, this is not going to come just from shipbuilding and ship repair. There will have to be something new also. And we, that's why we have set up this new division called the uh, uh, CSL Strategic and Advanced Solutions. We expect something to come in from that. We expect our subsidiaries, the two of the subsidiaries, to uh, chip in uh, from Udupi and from Calcutta. So I would be happy when I leave if I see 6,000, 6,500 crores. I think I should be happy. And the margin are on the same level, right? I, mean, I think, I think this, these margins uh, we should be able to sustain because without these margins, uh, there's no point doing this business. Uh, Shipbuilding, uh, we need to get a particular EBIT level, and ship repair, uh, with, the, with the challenges and the risks we take, we need to always see 21 to 23 percentage EBIT levels in ship repair. So if we do that, blended, we should fall around 18, 19 percentage. This is the hope and this is the direction which we are taking. Now this 21 percent you are talking of uh, for the, from the ship, ship uh, building ship side, repair. right? Ship repair. No, no. Ship, ship repair, repair, okay. 21 to 23 percentage. Okay. 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 Yes. Thank and, you, and, and all the best for your remaining term. Lower, but blended, blended, eighteen to nineteen percentage. Thank you. All the best for your remaining term. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Dixit Doshi from Whitestone Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, most of the questions are answered. Just one question you mentioned in the other income. Uh, there were some one-offs. So, can you quantify for the full year how much would be the one-off? Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Hello. management drop from the conference. Oh. Please stay connected. We'll reconnect the management. Thank you. 
ladies and gentlemen we have the manager reconnected hello hello yeah uh, so my question was uh, you mentioned that uh, this year we had some one off income and uh, yeah. other income also so for the full year how much would it be that one off was around 86 crores 86 for the full year full year full year okay fine that's it from my side thanks thank you thank you thank you shall we yes, shall we close yes uh, that was the last question yeah i now hand it to vastu palsha for the closing comment thank you thanks everyone for joining the conference call of fortune super limited if you have any queries you can write us at vastupal at sirimedrajesh.com and once more many thanks to management team and all the participants thank you thank you On behalf of Kiran Advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.